Hello, my name is Leilani Stewart. I'm a writer and a poet. And today is the book launch of my second novel, The Buddha's Bone. So this is the hardcover version. Uh, this is for $14.99. It's also available in paperback for $8.99 or as an ebook for $1.99. Uh, I'm gonna read to you a couple of excerpts from the book. And the first one is from page 94. This one is chapter 13 and it's called Dark Room. I opened my eyes in the darkness. Carl was sitting up in the hotel bed, staring at the TV, but the TV wasn't switched on. Carl, what is it? He turned and looked over his shoulder at me. I can't sleep. They keep going at it next door. Put the TV on, I don't mind. Better to drown out the sound than listen to it all night. I rolled over. Carl was fast asleep next to me. Wait, two Carls. One on his side, eyes shut, the other upright disturbed, my head disturbed. Watashi no sei de, atama ga okashiku naru yo. I'm out of my mind, I'm out of my mind. Carl, what's going on? The TV was on fire. The red dot, signal of no signal, was glowing, throwing burning light across the blank screen. I jolted upright and rubbed my eyes. No fire, tricks of the early hours, tricks of my mind. Mind playing tricks, mind games. Damn, English was my first language and yet I was translating it, rearranging the sentence structure of my own thoughts. Crazy country, attacking my sanity. Carl had gone. I looked around, the hotel room door lay open. The corridor beyond was poorly lit. Why didn't the lights come on automatically? Who was running the bloody place? Carl's face appeared in the doorway. I went to find out what's making the noise. The room next to us is haunted. What? What do you mean? I mean, there's a ghost. Wow, signs of the thrashing deceased. I pulled the blanket close to my chest. I'm going to complain at reception, said Carl. They knew this place was haunted when they booked us in. I'm gonna just stop reading there. That's a nice little chapter since Halloween is now in just about five days time. Um, but this is actually a literary fiction novel, so that one's a little bit of a teaser for you. You can read on to find quite what that chapter is about. And in the meantime, I'll read you another excerpt. This is from further on in the novel. This is page 188, chapter 24, Rainy Season. Jacket on over my pajamas, trainers with no socks. Umbrella grabbed, out the door, lock, hastily clicked. Once outside, the wind whipped my hair. Turbulent weather, turbulent heart. This was more than rainy season, this was a typhoon. A bloody big one too, a huge storm. It took all my strength to lean forward against the wind. Wind assaulted my face, water filled my eyes. Wind in my head, water in my heart. What was making me so afraid? What had me feeling too scared to float free on the wind or be carried off by the water unsupported? Maybe it was the lingering fear of drifting too far from shore and not being able to feel the safety of the bottom keeping me grounded, of being swept into a whirlpool from which there'd be no escape. Honestly, it made me feel vulnerable, ravaged by rivulets of rainwater streaming down my face. Why did it have to be a choppy ocean? Why couldn't it be a calm pool? Damn it, Kim Thatcher, you're in Japan, get over it. Work, men, the inability to decide what was best for me, my wants and needs. Don't reply to Carl right away. Let him have squirming time. Worms squirmed, right? But what if a worm was used to squirming all its life? Would it do any differently now? Nope, rip the plaster off. Have it out with Carl on the phone. Mad, this was a slow descent to madness. As mad as a bag in a tempest. As mad as a hatter devoid of any hats. Hats had never been my thing. Did it matter? Nothing mattered. And I'll stop reading there. Um, finally, I'll just read you the blurb from the back of the novel now, just to give you an idea generally about what the novel is about. Death. Kimberly Thatcher wasn't an English teacher. She wasn't a poet. She wasn't an adventurer. Now she wasn't even a fiance. But when one of her fellow non-Japanese colleagues tried to make her a victim, she said no. Cremation. In Japan on a one-year teaching contract at a private English language school and with her troubled relationship far behind her in London, Kimberly set out to make new friends. 
she would soon discover the darker side of traveling alone and people's true intentions. Rebirth. As she came to question the nature of all those around her and herself, Kimberly was forced to embark on a soul searching journey into emptiness. What came next after you looked into the abyss? Could Kimberly overcome the trauma of sexual assault and pregnancy loss, blocking her path to personal enlightenment along the way and forge a new identity in a journey of death, cremation, rebirth? Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, there are links below to order a copy um, if you want to support my writing and have a look at my author website for links to some of my other books, which are also just behind me there on the shelf. Thank you very much. Bye.